Another day dawns at our boot camp for bad motorists. Here at the Driver Rehabilitation Center, we are halfway through our intensive training regimen for Canada's worst drivers. And every day, I'm getting more and more distraught. Our students have reprehensible driving skills that I'm starting to think are pathological. These people run into things as a matter of course. When they get stressed, they freak out completely. And at every opportunity, they bypass responsibility. Slowly but surely, it's killing me. We started out with eight outrageously incompetent drivers who were all nominated as Canada's worst by you. The five remaining are David, who was nominated by his buddy George. David thinks this will be an unlucky year for him, and so far, he's right. Heather was nominated by her husband, Ernie. If something's in plain view, Heather might still run into it. Then there's Chris. His wife, Michelle, put him in the worst driver doghouse. Good boy, stay. Chris has some very basic issues, like he can't go in a straight line. Madalena was nominated by her pal, Jennifer. Madalena's insurance costs her parents $25 a day. Which brings us to Manuel, who was nominated by his co-worker, Alex. Manuel is a roller coaster of emotions, full of accelerating highs and crashing lows. And then there's me, an average driver. To show how easy car control really is, I maneuver through every course our students mangle. To help us in our quest to rehabilitate Canada's worst drivers, we've enlisted the skills of a crack team of experts. Jim Kent is a syndicated auto journalist. If you're going somewhere you don't want to go, why would you want to get there any sooner? Get your foot off of the gas. At Young Drivers of Canada, Scott Marshall instructs the instructors. Common sense says, stop and start again. Didn't happen. Kelly Williams gets to the point quickly. She's a cast car, race car driver. He doesn't seem like he's in control of no, what he's doing. He doesn't. And Queen's University professor, Dr. Uzma Raymond, is here to perform some psychological analysis. You had already convinced yourself when you got the car, I'm not going to be able to do this. While our drivers showcase their lack of talent, our experts will be watching their every move and deciding which of them will get to graduate back onto public roads. Canada's worst drivers are constantly worried about running into something with their car. Now they're going to be worried about running into something with their snowmobile. Let me out of here. I've been pretty confident about every challenge so far, but even this one has me nervous. I've never towed a trailer before, ever. Now the whole secret of this, when you're going forward, is to take wide turns, and you'll thread the needle every time. We'll get to the backwards part in a minute. Since our drivers are still struggling with the simple mechanics of steering, we're hoping that complicating matters with a trailer will focus their thinking. Then when the trailer comes off, they should be better drivers. That marks the end of the forward part. And here's where things get wonky. To make the trailer go where you want it to, you gotta turn the wheels in the opposite direction. This is the part I haven't been looking forward to. Reversing the trailer down an icy boat ramp just screams jackknife to me. I'll explain jackknifing later. Once you get to here, backing it up should be, should be, <laughs> a straightforward event. So we don't completely overwhelm our bad drivers with this task, we're giving them some quality time alone in an empty parking lot with our head instructor, Scott Marshall. If you want the trailer to go that way, you have to turn the wheel of the car the other way. Okay, that makes sense. All right, see how it swings out? Yeah. Now steer towards me. Steer. That's it, good, you're doing it. To properly control a trailer that's reversing, you have to make sure the angle never goes beyond 45 degrees. If you keep going, you'll jackknife and collide with your own trailer. First up, Manuel. Manuel's periodic bouts of progress are repeatedly undermined by avalanches of emotion. Settle down, Manuel. You're starting to get a little bit flustered again. Yeah, I am. I, 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 I feel an idiot. I feel stupid because other people can do it. Why can't I not do it? So, will the hitch be a drag? Yeah, no, 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 no. I cannot do that like that because the wheels are the wheels are gonna touch. Manuel is either slipping through the cracks by accident, or he really is getting better. Yeah, that makes sense. Careful. 
He glides through the forward section with ease. If I wanted to go... Usually, we insist that the nominator stays inside the vehicle. But trailer reversing should always be a team sport. That's good. That's the novelty of being at our boot camp has long since worn off for Alex. He wants Manuel to graduate so they can go home. Look at the stress on his face. Yeah, and he's so frustrated with himself now. For Manuel, that means the pressure is on. Manuel's emotions kick into high gear. Without warning, he tenses up and steers straight for the concrete wall. Why do I even bother? See, now we're screwed. With a heavy heart and an even heavier foot on the gas, Manuel shows signs of a total meltdown. When in doubt, hit the gas. Patience. Patience. But then, in a stroke of there common you know, sense, you Manuel gotta... backs down the ramp the properly. In line, the end, it's almost a perfect run of the course. Stop! But Manuel is obsessing about his errors. I think I've conquered one of my fears. A little bit. I'm, I'm getting closer because but going back for me is the hardest thing. Manuel has set the bar high. If he can keep it together for the next two challenges, he'll be sure to graduate. And that makes Alex very happy. I'm, really I'm feeling happy. a little bit better about our team after this challenge. How's that? You are? Yeah. Very good. I do. Next up, David. When it comes to steering, David is our most erratic driver. Back on the farm, he reversed in a bizarre arc that got him desperately stuck. And when he tried going straight through the eye of the needle, he was zigzagging into boxes like he had a vendetta against them. Another problem is that David lets George intimidate him. Our instructor, Scott, taught David to take the turns wide, but David listens to George get stuck. I don't know how to do this, man. George continues making matters worse by being his old grabby self. Oh, no, it's turning that way. The other way, sorry. Our experts have repeatedly told David to shut George down when he starts trying to take control. But when David gets stuck, he still looks longingly to his hapless friend. Huh? Turn your wheel this way. Towards you? Yeah. Who remains embarrassingly out of his depth. Stop, stop, stop. Just try to go straight. Stay close to that green car. Straighten your wheel, man. Wait. Mm, I think he went down on my books. I'm not happy with him. Then you gotta back up. Turn your wheel before you move. It's yours. Go. Okay, we're clear. Woo! Amazing. Holy cow. Good job, Dave. Now we gotta back up. Whenever Why David front, backs up, he ignores what's in front of him. You gotta make it go there. Forget the trailer. David doesn't even realize that when you reverse, the front of your car swings in the opposite direction. Now turn your car to go here. To go towards the yellow car? Yeah, your car. So oh, turn the wheel to, to towards back. your side. Well, there. Going forward or straight? Backwards. Backwards? Uh, okay. They're just not getting it. Just time for an intervention. What are we doing wrong here? Part of it, you have to allow time for the trailer to change direction. Okay. You want the trailer to go that direction. So which way are you going to steer? I can steer towards my direction. Okay. Not all the way, though. Use your driver's side mirror. Your other driver's side mirror. Scott is usually now a stickler steer. for the rules. He always insists our candidates do each challenge identically so it's perfectly fair for all. But he's seen enough, and he nonchalantly widens the course. Look, it's a lovely bird. Oh, yeah, that's beautiful. <laughs> Go ahead, Dave. Go straight. Even with Scott widening the course and advising him out of the jam, David still jackknifes. There you go. Keep Train it, train it, train it. Your car's going to hit the wall. We had hoped David would rise to this pivotal challenge, but he's sinking like a stone and he can't stop. Okay, let's just back up straight, Dave. Is it straight? That's perfect, man. Okay, stop. Woohoo! Stop! Good job, man. It was just, uh, we didn't touch anything. It was just, uh, it's uh, foreign to us, I guess. It's unfamiliar grounds. If you think David was on thin ice, wait till you see how the rest of them do. You're gonna hit the tire! He's driving! Aye.
Canada's five worst drivers are taking our trailer towing challenge. They have to go forwards and backwards through our twisted course, which ends on a downhill ramp. Oh, my God. Now, Chris. He got his license 13 years ago, but then lost his nerve and stopped driving. So, Chris, here you go. You're in a rear-wheel drive sports car. You got a trailer. You're going down that away. Uh, Michelle's going to be out of the vehicle for this. She'll direct you from outside, let you know how much space you have. All right. Have a good run. The clock is on. Be safe. Hit nothing. Thank you. Chris is serious about becoming a good driver. He's taking our private lessons. He's practicing fundamentals. And he's starting to believe in himself. Great. On the forward section, Chris gets through without a hitch. Now for the dicey part. Chris is famously bad at reversing. In our second show, he spent 45 minutes trying to back out of a dead end. And when he reversed our pickup truck, well, he went backwards all right. Can you see out the mirrors, Chris? Have you been looking at your mirrors at all? Uh, no. Now with a trailer behind him, Chris is in a quandary. Chris? Yeah? Where are you going? Well, I'm trying to get the, the ass end turned around. You're going to hit the tires! What? What tires? Pull up and start again. What tires? Chris is another driver who forgets his front end when reversing. Do you see where your trailer is? Yeah, I know, but I got a problem here. You want your trailer pointing that way, right? Yeah. Chris knows what he needs to do, but he has no idea how to do it. He starts to jackknife in attempt after attempt. It looks like the tail is wagging the dog. I'm still trying to get used to turning the wheel, wheel the right way to get the back end to It's like totally opposite. Very good. Get your skidoo in the water, sir. Chris has been niggling around for nearly 20 minutes, and sheer mental exhaustion is taking its toll on his decision making. No. Oh, wrong way. Some of the time. Pull forward a little bit. After nearly 25 minutes, Chris slides down the ramp, looking like he'd rather slide into bed for a week's recovery. I have some shocking news for you. What's that? That's the cleanest back end of the day. I gave me a split in migraine, but yeah, I guess I did it. Did you really? Did that hurt you? My head hurts. <laughs> you did good. I tried. You did good. I'm proud of you. <laughs> Thank you. Next up is Heather. Heather's been having issues with her husband. Turn the wheels the other way. In our last episode, Ernie got so frustrated by his wife's ineptitude, he took a time out in the middle of our reversing challenge. Let me help. But Ernie apologized, and they kissed and made up. You did okay, dear. Don't worry about it. So now what do we have to do? You have to back it between the yellow truck and that barrel. Are you going to help me? Well, I'm going to try. So I want to reverse. Turn to the left some more. Now to the right hard. Just gonna hit tires anyway. Sadly, Heather's drive is her usual bump-a-thon. Oh, I didn't see. And Ernie's guidance is more focused on the ramp than the obstacles. Okay, back up. Back up. Ernie's not barking out orders just because of testosterone. He's got credentials. He used to be a big rig truck driver. Okay, keep coming. Just straighten it out a bit. Straighten it out more. Hard, 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 hard. There's only minimal damage as Heather makes it with her marriage intact. It was slow, but for the first time, I think you need to go slow to get the feel of things. You did great. <laughs> What did you get out of the trailer uh, backing up experience? Because you did that very well, but I'm wondering how much of that was done by you and how much of it was done by Ernie. I was paying attention to what Ernie said. And Other people had advice offered to them and they didn't take it. You were able to execute. And that, this is the whole point of this entire exercise. There's only one person behind the wheel at any given time and you're responsible for that. So there was some, some progress there. It's time for Madalena. If Madalena took taxis everywhere instead of driving, it would be cheaper for her. Is that smoke coming from my car? It's because she thinks it's okay to run into people. Hey, I'm in this car. Well, Andrew, you're going to get your car hit if you put it there. And she thinks she should graduate? Get me out of here. I got stuff to do. Jen, we're going home today. Glad you're doing great. 
Driving this articulated vehicle is going to require some articulate advice from Mad's friend Jennifer. No other way. Turn the other way. No, the car goes, the thing goes the opposite way. No, I know. So turn this way. Go. It's moving this way. Trouble is, Jennifer's instructions aren't very articulate. What? Look, it, it turns this way when you back up that way. Turn back up this way. Back up the way that I was telling you to back up. That's where I'm going. Madalena threatens to jackknife and unravel. Move up. Mad, you're hitting the car. Move up. <laughs> okay, hold on. I'll just do it myself. Every time Madalena swerves back two meters, she needs to go ahead three meters to straighten up, which is why she's gradually moving farther and farther away from the shoreline. <sighs> In 27 long minutes, Madalena collects more jackknifes than a bouncer at a rumble. Mad! We never considered this challenge would be dangerous for the drivers, but when Madalena throws the car in neutral and tries to steer by running alongside it... Oh my God, stop it! We're all scared. <laughs> you know you're one of Canada's worst drivers when you nearly run yourself over. I hate driving. If I can graduate, I swear to God, I'll get a bus pass and I'll never drive again. Just send me home. I need the driving instructor. But move the car and then steer, so that way you see which way the trailer is going. Scott can advise, but he can't steer, and neither can Madalena. Just don't talk for a second. Oh, Jesus, would you stop? How long has it been, like three hours? I have to pee. Aye. We're at the 39-minute mark now, and unfortunately, I think spring might break before that snowmobile gets launched. Scott, come here. We're going to talk Madeleine into this, OK? She's proven that she can't do it on her own. Let's do it with somebody. Put it in reverse. Turn the wheels the other way. Okay. We're going to get you in there. While you're moving, turn the wheels the other direction. Madalena may be desperate to get off the show, but we reward results, not effort. This test took Madalena 48 minutes, and she's only done because we let her cut corners. And stop. We're going to call it good. You're in. You got two wheels on the ice. We're going to call that in. You going to be renting a trailer anytime soon? Hell no. Are you out of your mind? <laughs> Two wheels on the ice was the command. You pulled that off. They're on the ice, yeah. Two wheels are indeed on ice, so... Beautiful! Beautiful. Couldn't have made it any better, I guess. <laughs> that looks excellent. I am ready to go. The shocking part is, Madalena's reversing is improving. I have problems reversing. About 95% of my accidents, or bumps, I would like to call them, have been made during backing up attempts. Beware of any driver who puts quotation marks around the words backing up. Like, I was absolutely, like, trying. Like I, I agree you were trying. Thank you, Scott. Like, I, I was I, there, I, like... I, I agree. So, if it doesn't work, you've proved to yourself, this gets me frustrated and flustered. Okay. You need to do anything different. Mall parking is like chess. All mental strategy, never physical. Unless you're one of Canada's worst drivers. To avoid awkward incidents in parking lots, you actually need more than good driving skills. You need good manners. If two people see the exact same spot at the exact same time, who owns it? Welcome, folks. Take a look behind you. This is our version of a mall parking lot, okay? Like a normal mall parking lot, you might have to wait for spaces, okay? Our five nominees will be duking it out for two spots. Here and here. After that, two more spaces will open up when a couple of shoppers return to their cars. Four spaces, five bad drivers. Who will be the odd one out? Be courteous and uh, just get parked and everything will be good. What we're gonna do is these vehicles behind you are yours to drive. Obviously, some of these vehicles are gonna be easier to park than others. <laughs> the big old green Grand Marquis could have some issues. So this is the way you pick. Reach in there, <laughs> grab a golf ball, 
The Grand Marquis is over six meters long. It's the green one. You're the big old Marquis, Heather. <laughs> and Heather gets it. Matt Laney, you got the blue tempo. You got the purple tempest, my friend. Chris, it's a good thing you know how to drive, buddy, because you got the big old station wagon. <laughs> that means you are in the Honda Accord. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we have a winner. <laughs> He's such a happy man. Well, this should be interesting. This, this is the only exercise that they've had to sort of all deal with together, right? Mm -hmm. As opposed to individually, so. I don't think these people are the least bit competitive, though. Do you think? I think, no. Jen, we can do this. It's a parking lot. You see it? No. Right back there. Okay, so aggressive? Aggressive. Back up. Scare me. <laughs> back up and go straight into there. The floor because I might have seen it too. We'll definitely beat Heather on the reverse. Yeah. No, I don't like this. You'd have to do it fast. Once you're close to the spot and you're adjusting it, it's already yours. They're going for it. So just get to his And once as you you're can. standing in it, yeah, it's, it's yours. yours. Did Mad just say if you're standing in it? This is going to be a nightmare. Yeah, they are going through that. So. Can we go now? We're ready. <laughs> boom, ready. Boom, boom, boom. Please remember parking is a destination. Not a contest. Ladies and gentlemen, start your engine. Go! Jennifer immediately leaps out and sprints to the nearest spot. Oh, she's run out to grab a spot. Look at this. Yeah, but she didn't pick a very good one. Jen nearly gets run over while getting in position to be run over. Who would want to stand off against a station wagon? Or against Chris's wife? Oh, Michelle's figured this out. Getting All right. so competitive. <laughs> Once the tanks roll in, Madalena can only watch as Chris slips into the vacancy. Damn it! Why are you aggressive? <laughs> I've never seen in my whole life of mall shopping somebody take somebody's spot when they're standing in it. Like that is against mall shopping. That's like rule number four. Go. Nice. Meanwhile, Manuel drives away from the chaos and behaves like a normal person. He finds a spot and parks. Simple. No physical assaults or anything. <laughs> Three drivers wait to park, but there are no available spaces. Mercifully, two shoppers return to their cars. That should free up two more spots. Here and here. Get out of the car, Jen, and just go stay in the spot and do your job. Madalena orders Jen out of the car again to put her body on the line. The drivers all then descend on the first potential space so vigorously they box in the person trying to leave. I get things moving. Blue car! Go behind her. Oh, I know. Go, go. This, this girl in the, in the... She's gonna leave. David and George think they see a different spot about to open up, so they go stake it out. Sadly, this one could take a while. Madalena and Heather are locked in a standoff, each denying the other access to the potential space. I arbitrarily force Madalena to leave. Well, that upset a lot of people. But she just floors it and loops around to the other side, blocking Heather's access for a second time. This really is parking lot chaos. This, this is, <laughs> is cutthroat. They don't do this, this in medicine hat. No. Madalena claims to be ethical. I'm going to back into it. But when only one parking spot remains, Madalena's manners seem to have been returned for a full refund. Oh, that is... Oh, that, you know what? really unfortunate. If somebody did that to me, that. I'd get out of my car. Okay, so, like, there was a sale. There was a sale! We made it! When the final shopper leaves, it's a game of musical chairs. There's one spot left and two cars that want it. David's been waiting patiently for this space. Pull ahead, pull ahead, pull ahead. But Heather's in a fighting mood now, and taking a page from Madalena's book, she cuts in front of him. Excuse me, that's our spot. We've been waiting. Get, Tell me what to Get do. in there. David righteously feels the space is his. Hmm? So while okay. Heather tries squeezing in, <laughs> David swings around. It's yours. Oh, I don't have to go again. That is yeah. ignorant. Oh, George, nice talk. Okay, they get like so many negative points there. Mm. Wow. For not showing basic David. 
I feel bad for Heather. We should be courteous and give the old people the spots. Yeah, right? whatever. It's a competition, man. Keep going around. Are you find another spot? I feel yeah. bad. You should feel bad. You stole all the spot, man. We should give her it. You should. They should, but they don't give Heather the spot. Whatever happened to respecting your elders? What's the idea? What's your idea? You stole the spot from us. We're all waiting. We were signaling. Madalena and David's actions have been immoral, yet they're as proud as peacocks. Nice try, though. Manuel, on the other hand, has Heather? serious integrity. Heather, I'll give you the spot. Manuel pulls out and shows the younger people what decency looks like. Um, it's all right. Okay. We will get a place. You just may have blown the No, 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 no. Just okay. miss that car. Just keep missing. Well, I'm moving it. What's going on, man? Well, last time I saw you, you were parked. Well... The, the truth is, when you're in a situation like this, you have to be civil. And that's at the bottom line of this, that exercise is that. I mean, we were very fast. We had the most, the better car. So I just see that we're doing the right thing by letting Heather take their spot. You understand this challenge better than anybody. Very good. See, I told you that was a good idea. <laughs> there is no winner and loser. That's right. That was the final instruction they gave to people before they went, is parking is not a contest. It's a destination. Thank you for getting it. Very good. <laughs> After the next challenge, one of Canada's worst drivers will graduate. Here at the Driver Rehabilitation Centre, we have taken the eight worst drivers in the country as nominated by you. And we have come at them head on with extensive in-car education. Whenever one of our students improves enough to be allowed back onto the public roads, we give them back their keys. So far, three people have graduated, but the five who remain are all spinning wildly out of control, hurtling toward infamy. Ultimately, just one student will be known as Canada's worst driver. Is bad driving simple behavior, or could it be a physical condition? To find out if any of our drivers are hardwired to crash into things, we've enlisted the help of research scientist Christina Fogg. We check reflexes, eyesight, peripheral vision, hand-eye coordination, and hearing. That wasn't too bad. Chris actually did reasonably well, but his peripheral vision was slightly less than your average person. So 172. If he's looking at the oncoming traffic, he's not going to be able to see maybe that car that's coming out from the side. Good job. Keep going. Manuel had really good hand-eye coordination, but his reflexes were actually some of the poorest in the group. Nice try, man. David didn't have the greatest reflexes. Uh, he actually completely dropped a stick. Actually, Madalena did really well on the test and scored pretty close to the average population on most of the tests. Heather's hand-eye coordination was off, but also when we did her vision test, even with her glasses on, we'll read that line right there. She scored very, very poorly on it. Okay. You can't read that one? No. She was 2100, which means if I'm standing away from an object 100 feet, I can see it clearly, whereas for her to see that object, she'd have to be standing 20 feet away from it. So can't see that one? Okay, so that's again, 20 and 100. Which could be why she was missing in the hand-eye coordination is just because she couldn't see. Some kids grow up around motorized vehicles and wide open spaces. These lucky youngsters spend all winter on the ice doing donuts and skids and generally just raising hell until they get stuck. Now, civilized people think that's dangerous, and we certainly do not endorse doing donuts. But donut makers, when they grow up, you know, assuming these people do grow up, you know they wind up being about the only civilians who can handle icy corners at high speed? This is the challenge called Icy Corners. Have a bit of fun this time. We broke out the Firebird. Rear wheel drive, ice everywhere. We're asking people to get up to 50 kilometers an hour and then make these braking turns. Big animals, moose, don't hit them. Come back into the straightaway and give it the goods again. Get up to 50. We told people you must get up to 50. There I am. To make sure that people get up to 50 kilometers an hour, we've actually got members of the OPP here 
with their gun. A radar gun. Yeah, I'm at 50. Woohoo! You gotta make sure you miss these members of the OPP, though. It is slush central out here. And then fly toward our finishing mark. Our finishing line is the garage. And that's how you do the Icy Corners Challenge in a rear wheel drive sports car. To make sure they've got a grip on how to handle the peppy Firebird if her rear end starts to fishtail on them, Scott Marshall takes our licensed drivers onto the ice field for some slick lessons. When you hear that spinning, you're, you've lost your traction. Faster, because we're doing five kilometers. Keep going, we're at 20. Okay, turn around, we're at 30. Off your gas, look and steer where you want to go. Again, using your eyes. Drive with your eyes. Right. And your hands are only tools for your eyes. Right. Oh. oh! Well, that was pure and utter failure. And so to business. Now that we know that Heather can barely see past the front bumper, it's clear what her major problem is. The course is a hallway of pylons, but Heather can't see it, and she veers off into no man's land. She briefly rejoins the course, only to lose it again at the second corner. Go up there. <sighs> to her credit, she didn't hit anything, but... Uh, but she missed it. She just course. drove completely off. She drove on the neighbor's lawn. And yeah, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you go right in the grid? Are you having a difficult time seeing in front of you? Are you looking far enough in front? Maybe not. Maybe I need some practice in that. Our driving instructor thinks you're looking too close to your own vehicle, not looking far enough down the road. Okay. And perhaps one of his theories is perhaps you need a different kind of glasses that'll help you see. Okay. Well, I would think that that would help you immensely as a driver. It's a visual game, this. Oh. <laughs> Next up is David. <laughs> David here is scraping metal on metal so often, we've given him his own mantra. If, uh, hearing, if I'm hearing scraping metal, then get out of the car. Then stop. stop. Highways are supposed to be free of giant obstacles. But tell that to an 800-pound bull moose. Oh, he's going like, wait. Oh. Oh. Vision fixation, if I ever the saw leg it. Of the moose. Brake lock up and failure to release the brake. Of course, that's a tough yeah, technique, right? Yeah, but staring at yeah. it. That's yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, sorry. It's a big and important lesson. Every year, Canadian drivers hit 45,000 large wild animals. If David had hit a real moose like that, the torso would be sitting in his lap right now. When David drives straight, he usually swerves a lot, but he hits this police car without turning an inch. Back up. After that, David knows that anything he says can and will be used against him by our experts. So he's reluctant to talk. I don't know what to say about that event. That, that, that's a horrible event for me. You know, so <laughs> you got my weakness. <laughs> that's just one weakness. David's got a trunk load. Your tendency when you're driving is to stare and okay. have what we call vision fixation. But until you can unlock your eyes and look around the corner, you'll never get around the corner. If your wheels are locked, if the brakes are locked and not rotating, you could turn the steering wheel full left, the full right, and back again, the car would not deviate at all. Mm -hmm. When you are totally locked up heading towards a police car, mm -hmm. If instead of looking at the police car, you look over there and let your foot off the brake, the wheels will rotate, they'll grip, and they'll turn. Will the rest of Canada's worst drivers defy expectations and turn in perfect performances? Take a wild guess. Oh, we hit him loose. In the decisive final challenge of this episode, we're having Canada's worst drivers race along icy straightaways being sure to get up to 50 kilometers an hour. Then they must break and hit the corners without hitting the big obvious orange thing. Check out Madalena. She and Jennifer have been waiting for a speed challenge to break out their racing suits. Ah, priorities. Oh my I like God. the racing suit. Oh my, my gosh. Goodness. Okay, don't talk to me. I'm really concentrating. All right, I'll just sit here. Just let me get into the zone. Get into the zone. Hum, hum. What's your mantra? What's your mantra? What's your mantra? Get the hell off this show. When Madalena pretends she's in a high-stakes car race, her goal is the checkered bag. Hey, Ma, pretend 
that there is a sale, okay? And that there's like a beautiful Gucci purse that you can get, but you have to get there because I'm already there and I'm gonna buy it. What are you gonna do about it? I'm gonna step on that gas. <laughs> go, go, do it, do it, do it. The lure of a posh Italian handbag guides Madalena around the first corner. Power, power, power! She doesn't know what inputs to give it, that's why. No clue. She's just like, this is fun. Okay, I need to see my chiropractor now! Yo, hit all the targets and be like, oh, I thought it was like a video game, like kill the people. <laughs> we know from her medical that Madalena has the physical capacity to drive well, so why doesn't she? Hey, okay, go, go. Again, they're not taking it seriously. It's just a big joke. What's funny to Madalena isn't funny to our expert Jim Kenzie. To him, driving is a matter of life and death. That was just very fast, yo. You were giggling and laughing and just pretending like this was just fun. It, we just we keep getting the impression, though, you're telling us that you're learning and you want to learn, but you're laughing so much and giggling so much, and we just it's hard for us to understand that you're really taking this seriously. Oh, we're in trouble. Don't say that. Come on. Which brings us to our final driver, Manuel. Manuel's been nearly flawless this episode. If he nails this challenge, he'll surely graduate. Okay, we're going 60. You're going too fast. I'm not seeing the road. Oh, this is the road. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, we hit a moose. But he nails the moose instead. And when the moose goes down, Manuel's emotions start sliding out of control. Do you think you can do it? Because I, I just, look, look, this is crazy. I'm shuffling, I love my problem, I'm shuffling. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh! There goes the people. You know what, guys? We just killed people. No, no, no. Where There's a stress on his face. Yeah, and he's so frustrated with himself now. I've just been proven incapable of doing this at 50 or at 60 or at any speed whatsoever, so... Now I just go right into the boxes there. No, 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 no. Right into the boxes, but not Well, into the boxes. garage. <laughs> We're in the garage. I have no words to say what my performance on this was. Will our judges be able to forgive Manuel's slide into the abyss? He could still graduate. But it feels like a long shot. So definitely, this is the type of challenges that make you feel your shortcomings. You feel like, I suck. And that's what I did here. I sucked at this thing. I sucked. Like, even if I get out of here today, number three, number two, number one, I'm going to suck because I cannot do that. I kill the moose. I kill the people. I. That's crazy. Well, the moose just has two legs. We the are... people definitely died, though. They were hit at a fairly good speed. No need to describe that. Well, if... Okay. This challenge has left me, took the life out of me this morning. As you can see, I'm not as charming when I get, when I'm disappointed. Now I have to put up with this all day. This is why I really wish he does well on challenges. Because he gets in these moods. <laughs> you should have seen that. He didn't have control of that car once. Did you watch it? That's crazy. With all this mayhem, I can't imagine who the judges will graduate back onto public roads. Canada's five worst drivers are starting to hate the rehab center. They want to graduate and go home. We really want to be the next team to graduate. But, oh, well, I, I think, you know, I think, I, as of this morning, I think that we are going to be the new, the, the next team to graduate. I still. You still think? Yeah. I think I have become a better driver. Um, I'm more relaxed than what I was, and I think that's a big problem with my driving. If I have to stay here till the end, then fine, but I really don't want to. I think we, we, we deserve to, uh, to go home tomorrow, and I think we will. Let's hope uh, that the, the judges see it the same way. I really want to get, graduate because 
there's a pretty big party coming up tomorrow night and the next night and then there's come one the next weekend after that so you know get me out of here I got stuff to do well this was a truly abysmal show by all of our participants I'm at a loss as to how we can graduate anyone or who will graduate Kelly what do you think Please. It was sad. I mean, sad. the whole deal was sad. I mean, they just all kind of seemed to, in different ways, give up or just struggle. Are there unteachable or... people out there, Scott? No. No? No. You serious? Yeah. How much time do you have? As long as they don't give up and they want to learn, they'll learn. And you see somebody like Heather, for example, on the trailer, the Axel of Evil, you know, she and Ernie worked really well together on that exercise and she got through the thing and looked like a hero. And then... <laughs> She gets into the, <laughs> the parking lot thing. That turned into a physical assault, insane screaming, stealing old ladies' parking spots. The parking lot experiment was a fiasco. <clears throat> David doing a lap and while well, Heather's trying to back up that pig of a car that she was in, and David sliding in in front. He needs a serious talking to you, that boy. And the last instruction I gave them was parking is a destination, people. It is not a contest. Now, the axle of evil, I always thought it was, it was interesting that, again, it wasn't a race. The trailer. The trailer. Mm -hmm. Again, the idea about where their vehicle goes. And part of it is observation. You turn the wheel one way, the trailer goes the other. Well, when you didn't want it to go that way, common sense says, turn the other way. Or stop and start again. Didn't happen. And we had to time Madalena with a calendar. Mm. And I honestly think she can do something, but she's still in a child state. There was a little bit of improvement, and now I'm not seeing that. Madalena just needs to grow up. I mean, that's her biggest issue. She's acting like she's 12 years old. She won't change until she wants to change. That's, that goes for everybody. It, it's really tough to say that there's one of the five that never really is good yeah. enough to leave. So what I hear is that we're horrified by all of their learning curves at this stage. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Sad day at the office. Mm-hmm. For five full episodes, I've been very sweet to our students, but I've slowly been driven batty by their lack of progress. So it's time for me to snap and see if I can't scare some sense into these derelict drivers. Gossip is starting to fly around the Driver Rehabilitation Center. Five shows ago when we began, there was a unifying camaraderie amongst the nominees for Canada's worst driver. Now, there is rumor and judgment. None of these five individuals believe they could possibly be the most dreadful motorist in the entire nation, but one of them is dead wrong. Let's start with our parking experiment. In that, Manuel was the only person even the slightest bit civil. The rest of you turned it into a shameful fiasco. I don't even want to talk about the physical fights or the insane screaming. Heather, let's start with you. You, you bumped into a parked car. You got to stop. In fact, I'm going to say this to everybody, not just Heather. You've got to stop bumping in to parked cars. You, you're driving me crazy, you people. Okay, David, in that same parking lot situation, you stole the space of a sweet older woman. Madalena, as soon as we got you tied into the trailer, you were fine until things went a little bit wrong. Then you went berserk and you assaulted the course. In that moment, Madalena, you showed us that you just don't care. And you know what? You finally convinced us to come on board with you. We don't care about you either. You can sit in this chair for a long time if you want, because you're not going to graduate the rehab center this week. And Chris, oh man, I love you, but you know, in the tray, actually let's talk about the parking lot. Let's not, just forget it. You're having too much trouble driving. You just, you can't do it. So, this week, who will we graduate? Well, we figured it out quickly enough. We realized there was only one person we could graduate. Manuel, we decided we would give you back your keys. But... And you went through the icy corner sideways and you took out an entire family of cut-out pedestrians. And when that happened, when the little bodies hit the ground, I discussed it with our experts. They concur. This episode, no one has improved enough to graduate from the Driver Rehabilitation Center. Who is Canada's worst driver? You'll have to wait to find out. On the next episode of Canada's Worst Driver. Oh, what was that? You know the idea is not to hit anything, though, right? Well, I know, but okay. like. No, just... The possibility of a tie for last place still keeps cropping up. Oh, God. 
new depths of desperation. I need to graduate. Please graduate me. I promise I won't speed. Please.